when a precious stone or gem is first pulled from the earth, the untrained eye may not be able to recognize its potential. It's not until it's been processed and cut that it can really shine and the world can know its true value. So today we're going to take a look at 15 of the most expensive jewels in the world. Number 15, Bulgari Blue Diamond. A blue diamond is exactly what it says it is. It's a diamond, but instead of being completely translucent, it's blue. But they're also somewhat rare. Originally discovered in the Kolur Mine in India, blue diamonds have also turned up in South Africa and Western Australia and are formed in the lower part of the Earth's mantle. So if you want to find a blue diamond, then you're going to have to dig deep. Even if that means into your wallet, because there's one in particular, the Bulgari Blue Diamond, that sold in October of 2010 for 1.4 million a carat. So all in all, this Bulgari Blue Diamond was sold for close to $16 million at a New York auction, a record price for that auction house. This Bulgari Blue had originally been sold to a Roman boutique in 1972 for just $1 million, or about $5 million today meaning that the stone tripled in value over those 40 years. So while world economies may fluctuate and become volatile for a time, it's obvious that diamonds will never go out of style. Number 14, the Heart of Eternity. Rated a fancy vivid blue, the Heart of Eternity is another blue diamond that fetched a high price. It's a 27.6 carat jewel cut by the Steinmetz Group and later sold to the ever-famous De Beers, who finally unveiled the expensive diamond in 2000. This blue diamond was found in the premier diamond mine in South Africa, where you have less than a 1% chance of finding one, and even then, most of them are too small or just not good enough to cut down. So it's safe to say that the heart of eternity is ridiculously rare and ridiculously expensive. So for this one, size and rarity are the biggest factors, and it was so renowned, actually, that criminals even staged a diamond heist to get their hands on it. But luckily, for the heart of eternity, their plans were foiled, and the big blue diamond was loaned to the Smithsonian Institute to be put on public display. That is, until it was bought for the humble price of $580,000 a carat, and seeing how it's a 27-carat diamond, you're looking at 16 million bucks. But who exactly bought the Heart of Eternity? Well, the buyer isn't known for sure, but there have been more than enough rumors circulating that boxer Floyd Mayweather bought it for his girlfriend at the time. Number 13, Perfect Pink Diamond. There was a moment in time when Hollywood was absolutely obsessed with pink diamonds. The bigger and the pinker, the better. And even Jennifer Lopez was seen sporting a six carat rock that cost her beau Ben Affleck over a million bucks. But what made these pink diamonds such a hot item? Well, for the most part, it's their rarity, as they're one of the rarest forms of diamonds in the world. The pink diamond was first uncovered and discovered about 2,500 years ago, and in that time, only 18 of these diamonds, over 10 carats, have ever been found. It's a safe assumption that when they do pop up, it's a pretty big deal. The perfect pink diamond was considered to be in a class of its own and absolutely perfect with no other colors appearing in the translucent pink rock, which is why this 14.2 carat jewel was sold for over $23 million, of course, to an anonymous buyer. The buyer was from Hong Kong, so if you ever take a trip over there and find someone wearing a perfect pink diamond ring or necklace, you know you found them. Number 12, Wittelsbach Graph. The next expensive jewel on our list has a pretty rich history that can be traced all the way back to the 1600s. The Wittelbach Graph is another massive blue diamond that hails from the mines in India and is said to have been brought to the Western world by Jean-Baptiste Tavernier, a 17th century traveler and trader in search of more riches. The stone finally made its way to Europe and found itself in the hands of the royal family and was eventually used as a royal dowry. The stone was passed down the line of succession from Infanta Margarita Teresa to her granddaughter, Archduchess Maria Amelia. And when the Archduchess married the Bavarian Crown Prince, the Wittelsbach Graf diamond was incorporated into the Bavarian Crown Jewels, where it remained for the next hundred years. The Crown Jewels eventually scattered throughout the world with the onset of World War I and didn't reappear until the 1960s in Belgium, when a Belgian jeweler was asked to identify a mystery gem. The diamond was recut, losing just over four carats, bringing it down to about 31 carats. That's still pretty big. And just how much did the historic Wittelsbach sell for in the end? Try 23.4 million dollars. 
Number 11, the Winston Blue. This teardrop jewel is so beautiful and so expensive that it should bring tears to your eyes. The Winston Blue is a 13.2 carat flawless diamond with a fancy vivid blue color rating that broke world records when it was finally sold at Christie's Geneva. The Winston Blue is the largest of its kind and was named after famous CEO Harry Winston, and when it finally went up for auction, it garnered national attention, and the richest people and firms in the world were ready to get their hands on it. At the end of the day, the Winston Blue was worth $2 million a carat, and at just over 13 carats, the winning bidder shelled out $23.8 million. Imagine having so much money that you can not only afford a diamond that large, that rare, and that expensive, but also so wealthy that you can just name things after yourself. Number 10, the Orange. Also known as fire diamonds, orange diamonds were first unearthed in the late 1800s and are some of the most coveted colored stones in the world of jewels. They only exist in two parts of the world, South Africa and Australia. So when one manages to turn up, it is a pretty big deal. The hues range from amber to citrus and only increase in value as time progresses. Only a handful of these diamonds have been given the fancy vivid orange grade, and even fewer have been sold at auctions, and all of them weighed under six carats. So while they may be rare, they also tend to be pretty small compared to some of the whoppers we've looked at so far. That is, except for one. A diamond simply known as the orange was sitting in the private collection of an anonymous owner for 30 years before they decided to show it off to the public and make some quick cash in the process. The orange has 14.82 carats, much bigger than its orange diamond cousins, and it was predicted to fetch 17 to 20 million dollars tops at auction. Who would turn that down? Except when it finally made it to the block, the orange was sold for 2.4 million per carat. That's a total of 35 and a half million dollars. So the orange may have been the find of a century, but it may take another century for that buyer to make all that money back. Number nine, Graph Pink. If you ever come across a pink diamond exceeding five carats, then you better hang on to that thing for dear life, because you'll own another one of the rarest diamonds in the world. And if there's one thing that we can learn from the other jewels on this list, rare always means expensive, always. And while we've already seen the pink diamond that fetched a pretty penny, there's another one out there that puts it to shame. We're of course talking about the pink diamond that would soon become known as the Graph Pink. And who better to own such an amazing gem than the owner of the Winston Blue, Mr. Harry Winston. Originating from the mines of Lesotho in the African continent, the Graph Pink had been sitting in Winston's personal collection for six decades before he finally decided to unveil it in all of its glory. This 24.7 carat pink diamond was eventually bought by Lawrence Graff, a diamond collector known as the King of Bling for just over 46 million, making it the most expensive diamond in the world at the time. Number eight, Blue Moon of Josephine. In 2014, an uncut gem was found in the Cullinan mine of South Africa that was so spectacular that even in its unrefined form, people knew it would be destined for greatness. The rough diamond was about 30 carats and was cut down to 12 and estimated to be worth around 15 to 20 million bucks. The blue diamond that would one day become known as the Blue Moon Diamond was internally flawless and given the highest color grading possible for its type and was probably one of the greatest diamonds in the world. It sat on the shelves for about a year before it was put up for sale at an auction, where it caught the attention of one Hong Kong buyer in particular. The Blue Moon went for four million a carat, making for a total of $48.4 million, well over the original estimation. But the buyer didn't purchase it for himself. No, instead, he decided to give it to his seven-year-old daughter, Josephine, as a gift. He even named it after her. So the diamond became known as the Blue Moon of Josephine, and Josephine became the luckiest seven-year-old in history. Number seven, the Oppenheimer Blue. Bidding for the Oppenheimer Blue took a full 20 minutes to conclude at an auction in Geneva in May 2016. There was fierce competition in the first few minutes until it finally dwindled down to just two bidders going head to head for one of the largest blue diamonds in existence. The Oppenheimer Blue was named after Sir Philip Oppenheimer, the diamond's previous owner, whose well-to-do family was in control of the famous De Beers Group, and one-time owners of the Wittelsbach and even a ring that was once worn by Marie Antoinette. So yeah, it's fair to say that they've got the cash. 
This rectangular shaped blue diamond came from the mines of South Africa and was 14.6 carats. And when it was finally bought by an anonymous buyer, the Oppenheimer Blue set them back an insane 57 and a half million bucks. Number six, Steinmetz Pink. We're back to the illustrious pink diamonds. The Steinmetz Pink is naturally one of the finest diamonds in the world and was unveiled to the world in Monaco in 2003 after being discovered in Southern Africa. Since that time, this fancy, vivid pink diamond changed hands occasionally, being worn by the supermodel Helena Christensen and then eventually handed over to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., so everyone could enjoy it. And if you thought the previous pink diamonds on this list were big, wait until you hear about this one. The Steinmetz pink is 59.6 carats. That's twice as big as the Graf pink. It was graded internally flawless, which is a rank held by a select few, and it took 20 months to perfectly cut this big gem down from its original rough size of 100 carats. It took a team of eight people who worked on 50 models before they even began on the Steinmetz to make sure they got everything absolutely perfect. Even the tiniest mistake, and they could have shattered this pink diamond. And when the Steinmetz pink finally went on sale, it was picked up by Chow Tai Fu Enterprises, a Hong Kong conglomerate company, to the tune of $71.2 million. Number five, De Beers Centenary Diamond. While some of the jewels we've seen so far have a royal history, the Centenary Diamond is much younger. It was found in South Africa's premier mine in the summer of 1986 using X-ray imaging systems and weighed a whopping 599 carats rough and uncut. It was the third largest diamond to come out of the mine and was graded flawless both internally and externally. Now in the property of De Beers, it needed to be cut very, very carefully. A team was assembled to cut the diamond down, and they were placed in a special underground facility with carefully selected engineers and electricians to keep the place up and running, and even security guards were handpicked to keep watch. Variations in the room's temperature and mechanical vibrations all needed to be kept under control to keep the centenary diamond from cracking. 154 days later, this Avengers-type team finished their work and came out of the lab with a newly cut 273.8 carat centenary diamond in 1991. At the time, the diamond was valued at $100 million. De Beers held on to the centenary, loaning it out to the Tower of London, but there is much mystery surrounding its current ownership, with many saying that De Beers sold it off, but the company has declined to comment on the issue. But seeing as how the value of diamonds only increases over time, a gem that was 100 million in 1991 is most likely priceless today. Number four, Hope Diamond. Another diamond once in the possession of Jean-Baptiste Tavernier. The Hope Diamond was originally known as the Blue Diamond of the Crown and was cut from the same cloth as some of our previous entries. So you could be sure that it fetched a pretty penny in the end. The Hope Diamond was originally 116 carats when Tavernier sold it to King Louis XIV of France in the 1600s. And as time went on, the diamond was further refined and found itself in the possession of multiple owners until 1910. It was given to Evelyn Walsh McLean of Cartier. Yes, that Cartier. She had the diamond refined even more to her liking, 45.5 carats to be exact. It was donated to various museums and exhibitions until, as always, it found a new home at the Smithsonian Institute and has been valued at $350 million. Number three, the Cullinan Diamond. The Cullinan Diamond was discovered in 1905 in South Africa and with a weight of 3,106 metric carats, it's the largest diamond ever found. It's so magnificent, in fact, that many of the crown jewels have been cut from it, so the Cullinan diamond is a pretty big deal. The stone was originally handed over to King Edward VII during the Boer War as a sign of good faith by the South African government before it was further cut down in Amsterdam. And it's said that the rough diamond was so hard that it broke a knife clean in two when they first tried to split it. Eight men worked 14 hours a day for a full month of work to get the Cullinan diamond cut into nine separate and polished stones. Each of these stones was numbered one through nine, and they're still referred to in this way today. But apart from the nine large stones, another 97 small brilliants were made. This was a big rock. 
but today the Cullinan stone exists in the form of 105 stones of various cuts and sizes, but the largest diamond in the series is worth about $400 million today. Number two, Sunsea Stone. The Sunsea Stone is a yellowish 55.2 carat stone that was first purchased in 1570 in Constantinople by the French ambassador to Turkey, Nicholas Harlai. Harlai lent the stone to King Henry III to be used to decorate a hat he wore before it was given to his son, Henry IV. The Sunsea Stone clearly has a long, rich, and sometimes convoluted history, but eventually it found itself in the hands of William Waldorf Astor, a New York State Assemblyman in 1906, which he gifted to his daughter. But nowadays, it's owned by the Louvre in France, where visitors can appreciate the massive stone while it sits safely in a glass case. But this shield-shaped Sunsea Stone is not for sale and probably will no longer be again because it's too valuable to have a price tag, literally, because the Sunsea Stone has been listed as priceless. Number one, Kohinoor. Persian for mountain of light, the Kohinoor weighed almost 200 carats when it was first found, before being cut down to 105.6 carats. And if the writings are true, then this jewel is old, really old. Some sources will tell you that it's been referred to in Sanskrit as far back as 3200 BCE, while others say it originates from the Rajas in 14th century India. Either way, though, the Koinor is beyond extravagant. It eventually found its way to Punjab, but the area was subject to English colonialism and annexed. It was incorporated into Queen Elizabeth's state crown as the central stone. Plenty of replicas of the Koh-i-Noor have been made, with the most popular one being on display in the Jewel House at the Tower of London. But because of its controversial and perhaps forceful acquisition from India, there is much dispute among nations as to who the rightful owner is, making the Koh-i-Noor perhaps the most controversial diamond of all time as well. While this diamond has been long considered priceless, it's been estimated that the actual worth of the stone is around $500 million. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.